Today's topic, Deion Sanders is college football's most hated coach. Shout out to Bill Simmons for today's video. The full video will be linked in the description below. Let's get it. What's happening in Colorado right now is, to me, one of the more embarrassing situations that I've seen in any sports organization ever. Like, they don't have an identity. They don't have any institutional control. Their coach is on Twitter going at it. I love Deion Sanders so much, but it doesn't seem as if Deion Sanders knows what it takes to be a college football coach at that level. He's learning on the job to such a degree that like, he's engaging in Twitter beefs against college kids. They, they're they losing recruits to the transfer portal, portal left and right. No one really knows what they're building around or what they're doing. Are they an offensive team? Are they a defensive team? I mean, they're certainly not a defensive team. Are they exploding? Bro, what, hold on, wait a, wait a, wait, hold a timeout, bro. How you gonna say they don't know if they're an offensive team or a defensive team? Then you gonna come right back behind that and say, well, we know they're not a defensive team. So what the hell are they there? They're an offensive team. You know who they building around. They building around Travis. They building around Shadour. Like, come on, Shiloh, man, cut it out, bro. Cut it out, man. Like, the, the amount of hate that Coach Prime gets for just being a polarizing figure uh, it's, it's like it's, it's like these are just to me. This is just clickbaiting. This is just feeding into the people that that hate Coach Prime. Like anybody that talks negative about Coach Prime, see their views go through the roof. If you want to get views, just talk bad about Coach Prime. Just talk bad about the program. I mean, tell, come on, bro. Like he took a one in eleven, one in thirteen, whatever it was. It's one in eleven, whatever they was last. Year, he took that team and brought a bunch of FCS players. These were FCS players outside of Travis Hunter. Everybody else was pretty much an FCS player, and they came in and won four games this year. You know, nobody has it figured out that first year in the system, especially when you go to somewhere like Colorado that didn't have a lot of winning culture in place. Like, come on, but it's not Alabama where they got, like, all this tradition and culture and resources and cachet and clout. It's Colorado. All the clout Colorado got came from Coach Prime. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, this, all this, we just going to hate on Coach Prime to get views. Man, that is not cool, bro. And then you're going to contradict yourself just then? Come on, bro. Come on, man. You can't do that. Closer, are they methodical? And it's it's all kind of, it's like an empty swag burger, like a swag burger with no meat, no cheese, no nothing on that, no protein. It's just all condiments. An the empty bun. swag burger. Really? So you go... Deion Sanders is an empty swag burger. Come on now, like that. This just, this just hate rhetoric. This all it is. Like if any, if Deion Sanders ain't got nothing else, he got swag. And that thing, he got the big old meat patty paws <laughs> with lettuce, cooked medium rare with the sauce, with the caramelized onions and the the, the whiskey glaze. I'm hungry. But come on, bro. This is just straight hate speech. Like this, I don't, I don't get it. This is just straight hate. Like there's no substance here. Like you just, you just saying stupid stuff. Like you said, Deion Sanders doesn't have swag. <laughs> what? An empty swag burger. Swag burger. No meat. It's like you dress it up and you boom. There's nothing in the middle of it. It's so like that's actually... like what cousin Eddie made in vacation. Yeah, exactly. There's no meat. They can't afford the meat right now. And so to me, I'm actually. It's getting to the point to where, you know, it's a little embarrassing for what's going on at, at Colorado. And if they limp into another four and eight season, it's going to be embarrassing in a big way. You have thoughts, Priscilla? I want to know. I want to know what their thoughts are on people like Billy Napier. You know, I know it's the SEC, but the boy's struggling down there. They're struggling down there. You know what I'm saying? Where, where, where is the outrage there? Why is it that? Coach Prime being on Twitter is such a, a big issue. Like, Coach Prime been on Twitter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's been a public figure. He's been the showman since he was drafted and then went into the league and then got gold jackets. Like, I don't understand just, like, who did y'all think Coach Prime was going to be when he got to Colorado? The same person he was in at the park ball, same person he was in high school when he was coaching there, and the same person he was when he got to Jackson State. He's the same person now. You know what I'm saying? Like, what did y'all think was going to happen? He was on 60 Minutes. He was on the cover of Time Magazine. They came in last pay place in their conference. It was a fun little story when they had the comeback against Colorado State. They beat TCU, and people framed it as they beat the defending national champ co-runner-up. Hold on. Did they not? Those are facts. TCU 
and I'm gonna link the full the full video is linked below. Come on, I, I can tell right now I'm gonna be stopping this thing a lot. But TCU was the national championship runner out, runner up, and Colorado beat them with FCS players plus Travis Hunter. Like, come on, bro, those things, those are facts. You can't argue facts. When TCU was a completely different team. So part of me was like rooting it for it to work. And then it became very political that if you didn't like Dion, it was for a specific reason. And then if you did like Dion, it was for a different reason. And it just, I don't know, man, it just got kind of like baked into this big stew when I think that it's the same for anybody. If you get a ton of attention and the team ends up stinking, people resent the attention you got. And that's all I think it is. I liked it some- as it was happening because I thought it was fun. College football was just completely imploding. And then this guy was coming in as almost the catalyst for some of that implosion, the way he was approaching building the program. I was like, I'm in. This is fun because college football is a fucking mess anyway. So Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, gets so much hate for how he cut that team up and told those kids to hop in the portal and I'm my Louis, I got my Louis luggage coming. But y'all ain't saying nothing to all these other schools. Y'all ain't saying nothing to all these other schools that had coaching changes that's happening right now. And they pushing them kids out into the portal, say, hey bro, you ain't gonna be able to play here. But because they don't have the same platform that Coach Prime has, they're not getting asked the same questions the same way that Coach Prime is getting asked it, they get a pass. Come on, bro, like that's 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 not fair. I need to hear that same thing with Kane the board and a lot of kids hopping in the portal. You know what I'm saying? The kids hopping to the portal in every freaking school. Clemson done lost more players to the portal than they done gained. You know how I know that? Because they ain't gained nobody. But they ain't lost plenty of players to the portal. So why, where's the uprage for that? Hmm? Talk about that. But it seems like... I, it just doesn't seem like, remember we did that segment, Van, when we were talking about mm-hmm. where he'll go next? That was like the height of the Dion mania. But now yeah. it's like that. I almost feel like the way it's playing out, he's probably just on TV in a year. Well, I mean, when you start to really get into it, that's when I knew it wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> like when when you when you started to like when I started to see you and you're into college football now, and that's right. kind of the thing. That's when I was like, this is going to crash. This and burn. is bad. There's no way. They don't, yeah, we don't want like, casual Bill involved in like our college Bill, football like Bill every Saturday. In, th- th- that's when I started to identify, oh, this is the college football fan that's actually all over Colorado. So th- yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? This is what I'll say. There is a unique opportunity here, though. The unique yeah. opportunity for Deion Sanders in Colorado is that the expectations are right back where they were at the beginning of last season. So they're in the Big 12 now. Being in the Big 12, a lot of people think that because there's no marquee team in the Big 12 right now that they're going to have a a push over there. No, you're going to deal with a lot of teams that have a a lot of program stability in terms of the way they turn out their athletes. You're not going to be dealing with a whole bunch of big-time five stars, but I was listening to Josh Pay talk about this, and he was saying you're going to deal with a bunch of teams that are uh, manufacturing starters. So Mm. three years, you get a starter, and those people know how to play football. But still, though, the talent gap between them and... But, okay, like I said, I'm I'm team high school. I'm team team build through the high high school ranks. I help kids get recruited. I'm always default to high school. But you can't say in one hand, teams are manufacturing starters, and then on the other hand, ding Dion for picking up starters out of the portal they may not have been uh uh some most of these kids have been starters at the previous school they went to you know what i'm saying so they may not have been like the best they may not be first round draft picks transferring to colorado but these are starters that went through a program for two three years uh, and they came to colorado so it's the same end results they just got there differently like i like i say i prefer to recruit through the high school because I'm not a big fan of the portal. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but if you're going to use it, use it. I mean, shoot, man, it's, it's your team. They're going to hate you either way it go. Whether you win with all these transfers or you lose with all these transfers, they're going to hate Coach Prime either way. Same thing for Caden DeBoer and all these other coaches. They're going to love or hate you either way. So you might as well do it the way you want to do it because it's going to fall on you regardless. So. I don't know, man. I just, ugh, this is like a lot, a lot of hate. And maybe I'm biased. I could be biased. I could be. I could be. Because I'm team Coach Prime all the way through and through. But, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't, they ain't just got to be hating on the man just to do it, just for clicks. Some of the other teams is not going to be there. So if they peel off a couple victories, 
particularly early in the season, we're going to go right back to Colorado is back. That's not the pro- that's not the problem. That's not the question. The question is through a recruiting class, through a culture. What's the culture in Colorado right now? Through a recruiting class, through a culture, um, and through momentum, can you build something that's sustainable? And it just seems like there's a lot of chaos over there right now. I love Deion Sanders for all the reasons no, I don't. should love Deion Sanders. No, for some of those reasons Russillo was talking about. I do. But yeah. I also love college football, and I can't turn a blind eye to the fact that the way you're doing, the way you do what they're trying to do, uh, it just doesn't work. You can't build a line through transfer portal. You can supplement through transfer portal. You can't build a whole program through it, et cetera, 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 et cetera. So. I mean, this is how I see it. The with the time clock that Deion Sanders has, Coach Prime has with his current roster, when he transferred in Shadour and Shiloh, all those key players from from Jackson State, you have you you in a win now window. All you need to do is fill in those gaps, mainly those mainly filling in the gaps up front uh, on both sides of the ball. You can and then see what happens. Just see what happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they have a win now approach. Uh, they have to because they have to get guys in. A lot of freshmen are not going to come in and start right away. Just like you said, like just like you said, whoever you are in the middle with the black hat on, you said other programs are manufacturing starters that have been there for three years. Dion's only in year two. <laughs> Even if he brought freshmen in last year, they still only have a year under their belt. So Dion is like two, three years away from having a manufactured starter, but he has to win right now. So I'm saying, like, what do you expect him to do? What y'all expect him to do? Priscilla, where is Dion in 2026? Uh, if they're, if he still wants to be there and they're better than they were last year, they'd probably be like, look, this is probably about as good as we can do for a program that was one of the worst programs in college football for a long time. I don't know what the new Big 12 is going to look like. It could seem more wide open. But I was rooting for him because I was glad that a program did something this outside of the box. Like you screw up with this offensive coordinator who's on a seventh team all the time. You've always, you know what I mean? Like there's plenty of failures to go with the normal model. So try the different model. That's why I was so excited for Antonio Pierce. You know, even though the Jeff Saturday thing didn't work, I wanted it to work for Antonio Pierce and I was thrilled. And I know it's a little different with Dion. So I was rooting for it, but he just can't help himself sometimes. And I think when you're going to talk that much shit and asking people in the media, hey, do you believe? Do you believe? And then it's like, well, it's not my fucking job to believe. I'm just here to cover the game. And then they stink. (laughs) You know, we don't, we we love attention in college football. We love the energy. We love the luncheons and the boosters and everybody get really excited. But it's like, all right, go out, go out and tackle somebody every Saturday and play some defense. But it was only one year in. So we'll see what happens, but it was a wave of, if you're not on board, you're a hater. And it's like, I I don't, I don't think I'm a hater. I just, I'd be surprised if you were going to end up being that good. And then when you looked at the portal grade, I was like, maybe they are going to be this good as they started the season. Then you realize they couldn't play any defense and the offense fell apart. All these things went south. And, you know, look, if you want to find guys that transfer out that have, that are going to shit talk the previous program, like get in line. You know, the Athletic did that huge piece on all these guys and where they are now. And some of the stories were sad, but it's also kind of the way college football goes. You can find recruits from everywhere else that have gone, oh, this new guy came in and I left and I went through all this and I hate those guys. And here's my quote. Like, you can find all that kind of stuff. Like I just got Joe Burrow. <laughs> and this, is, this is my question. Where is the selective outrage for Lincoln Riley? It just came to my head. Like, where's the selective outrage for that? Because he left Oklahoma, went to USC, brought his quarterback. Nobody, no, nobody bad an eye because it was Caleb Williams and blah blah blah. Woo woo woo. Deion Sanders does the same thing. It's oh my god, whatever. All right. Now, USC did not have a great season last year. USC was a much better put to, was a much better put together program than Colorado last year. And they barely they won like two extra games than Colorado. But nobody says anything about Lincoln Riley. Nobody just, nobody's just killing Lincoln Riley right now. Nobody. Why? Because Lincoln Riley's name doesn't have any clout. I mean, it does, but it doesn't, it's not going to get you any views. You can't talk about Lincoln Riley uh, going 75 or 6-6, six and six, whatever it was. It's not going to get you any views. But it's talking about Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. 
No matter how you talk about it, if you're talking about hate towards Deion Sanders in Colorado, you're going to get millions of views, millions, <laughs> billions, billions of views. Uh, so it just, it's interesting, man. Where's the selective outrage when Kevin DeBoer came over from Washington? He brought a, a lot of players, about three or four or five players came with him. Nobody says a word. Nobody says a word. Every coach that goes to a new school is going to take players with them that want to come, and that's good enough to play. So it just why is it only an issue when Coach Prime does it? That's what all, that's the only thing I understand. Yeah, but no, like even, look, there were guys, there were guys, MF and Saban, in that 07 team, being like this guy, you know, coming in here, like telling me you're going to change it all over. So I hope it works out for him. But I, I think it's, I think the lines have been drawn where there are going to be some that absolutely just revel if he fails again. And then I would think if they get off to a good start, maybe some people will chill about what it actually means. Hmm. Mm. Do you, you know what I really hope, though? Last thing I'll say. What I hope is that for Colorado, what I hope, and for Deion Sanders, is that everything that he and the program purports to be, that they really mean it. Because I know a lot of people, take my mother, for example. And this is actually a very important thing to say culturally for like someone like my mom. When my mom thinks about Deion Sanders, my mother thinks not about football. She thinks about God and she thinks about family because that's what Deion Sanders tells you. He says God, he says family. And those are beautiful, amazing things, especially when you're going to send your son somewhere. And so when she watches the games and she's all into it, and the games aren't going the way that they, they're they going, and she sees some certain things, it, it starts to be like she actually was emotionally let down by how Colorado's season ended mm. because it didn't seem like it was about what she thought it was about. The more she got into it, and she's reading these athletic articles and she's sending stuff to me, she's like, well, he's supposed to be a, a daddy and a father figure to these young men, and it's supposed to be about more than that, like, how could they feel abandoned by him? And she doesn't quite get the business of college football and how it's supposed to go. Everything Ryan's saying is true. But you want to believe in what the standard there is supposed to be. And as hard as this is, the field will actually be a referendum on that. It will be because if you're willing to stick it out, if you can stick it out with players and develop them and doing all this, you start to see that on the field. But if it's always firing this guy, quick fix, pointing the point, like like you know, pointing the finger at someone, and passing the buck on someone, you'll see a staccato, weird, bad season over and over again for them. So if their fundamentals are real, they'll have success. But I'm, I, I, no one can know right now if they are or not. What you cannot conflate this man talking about God and family to winning. That's not that's not a that's not gonna always equate. That's not because football is about what's on the field, what you do on the field. Deion Sanders can be a father to all these dudes, but in the day they gotta win. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's a lot more. You can't conflate his his parent parenting philosophy with winning. Cause coaches that don't care nothing about their players that win. <laughs> like they just you just helping me win, man. You know what I'm saying? So I get what he was trying to do with that, but it's like you conflating two different ideals that don't necessarily match. You know, then you went into like she was reading articles about this and they was losing. Like, I mean, like nobody expected. I had Colorado for five games, five wins last year, five. Uh, and I think I forgot which two games they they could have actually won like six or seven games this year, but they did it. Um, and you know. Nobody expected him to go into Oregon and beat Oregon and beat USC. Nobody expected that, especially once Travis Hunter got hurt. You could hang that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's it's the first year. It's going to be some bumps and bruises. You know, year two, year three is going to tell the real story. Year four and five really going to tell the story once Shador and Shiloh get up out of there. Then we're going to see what, you know, what's really going on with Coach Prime. And I'm going to be right there with you. Like, hey, man, well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But... At the same time, man, I don't think you can conflate those those different ideals and stuff like that and then try to make whatever point you try to make. Even his co-host, like, what are you talking about right now? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It also could be a mess, too, right? 
Like if you want to believe the bad stuff, you could be like, it's a TV show. It's a reality show. Sure. It's, it's all about Dion. It's not really about the kids. Um, and this is all bullshit and it's all hype and all these things. Like you hear enough of it, but then again, you're like, all right, is that criticism specific to him or whatever? Like, I don't, I don't know, but there's a lot of evidence that that might be true. And then three years later, we're going, remember that? Right. Yeah. Well, it's I, like when, I don't uh, know. remember when Paul West had coached the Nuggets in the early nineties and he tried that crazy offensive style and he just got torched and then that was it. And a few years later, it's like, remember that Paul West head thing? It's Dion's not going to be like that with Colorado, right? It won't be that bad. No, like, I mean, it, yeah, like, look, I mean, they did go like, what are they? One of their last nine, they won one game in their last nine last year, right? But the the thing that was bothersome about that is anyone who had watched college football could see that coming. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean. Anybody who had watched the sport could see that coming. Even, you know, they they win a huge double overtime game, a uh, huge in terms of how right. how is Ballyhood. And huge TV double rating. overtime game against Colorado State. I know it's a rivalry game, but I'm like, you no, know, if these guys are a top 20, top 15 team, probably shouldn't have went to double OT in Boulder uh, against a team that's not going to have very many guys hear their names called um, when the draft comes. So you knew that they were going to struggle when they got to conference plate, but they didn't just struggle. They completely got pulled apart at the seams. Yeah. See, that's my issue. Like, like I said before, like nobody expected Colorado to go and win four. I mean, I expect them to win five or six. They won four. Nobody expected them to go in and run the table. Like we, most people thought they were going to lose to TCU. A lot of people thought they were going to lose to Colorado state, you know, but you know what the media man is, is mainstream media is, interesting like they can spin a narrative however they want like when they won tcu they're like oh man Deion sanders they do all that pumping you up just so they can pump to push the you know pop that pop that balloon so it just it's interesting man like you know that we all knew that even coach prime knew they was gonna struggle on the back end of that, that schedule like we all knew it then they lost the battle of attrition they didn't have a lot of depth that's why they went into the portal so heavy to get guys that can come in and contribute right now they had so many changes on the offensive and defensive side of the ball up front in the trenches, that they, they just didn't have enough cohesion, they didn't have enough depth, they didn't have enough talent there. So that's what they've been addressing all off season. So hopefully we see them in a positive. Hope we see them get to six, seven, eight, eight wins, maybe, maybe a bowl game. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? But y'all can't keep moving the goalposts. When y'all when he came in with a one in one in eleven, one in twelve, ten, everybody, oh man, it, all he gotta do is get the if he win two games, that was a positive, that was a good year. He won four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, he got the four. Oh, he didn't win five. Let me see, let's see how y'all do. I just oh. <laughs> it was infighting. There was coaching changes. There was backbiting. There was chirping out of the locker room. They the wheels completely fell off. Not just not not even just good losses, just it looked bad. No adjustments being made the whole nine. And you yeah. started to ask the question is, love Dion, love his family, love everybody over there. But the question starts to be, like, what are we really doing? And also, I'll something else I'll say before, before. Another thing is, the sycophantic way in which he's covered is not helping Colorado. It's not. Like, I watch Undisputed, and it doesn't matter what, what the fuck happens. You watch Undisputed? It, that's a good the clip come up on YouTube. Were you were sick that day? <laughs> Jesus. He said, I watched the clips. You know what I'm saying? Okay, y'all wanted this. What I'm just saying, they... Did you, like, did the, you watch in, the episode when it asked if Colorado was Black America's team? Where you're like, yeah, right, I, did, I, did I have to tape this when, one. <laughs> right, yeah. That, that's what that's what wrote me in. So I watched... The <laughs> Kalika, show, where's like, the remote? I got to press record. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what got so, me in there. <laughs> but I watched it, and I love those... Like, like, y'all see? Now, when Keyshawn come out and start dissing, Bill, Bill, you don't want the smoke? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is I watch it and no one's keeping it real. Like everybody's like, it's like Colorado lost 59 to 7 last night. And you hear Skip Bayless go, but golly, that's seven points. <laughs> Jesus Christ, were those kids out there hustling? You can tell that he's a leader of men out there in the future. They're going to be able to cut that margin to 14. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Just keep it real. This shit not going well. And that, like, that, that'll light a fire under them to maybe change some shit up. So I can't do the thing where I'm tepid in my criticism of, of Dion anymore. It doesn't, I can't do it.
for cultural reasons or any other reasons. I, can't. I mean, that's fair. I, I will say uh, mainstream media on, on both sides of the pendulum do, does not play, does not really look at Coach Prime and Colorado with a, uh, a balanced lens. I, I pride myself on being more balanced. You know, that's why I'm like, I can have, I can talk about the things that Colorado needs to work on and be like, Hey bro, they also good in this area. It ain't, I ain't gonna only focus on the good and I ain't gonna only focus on the bad. I'm not, I'm not on those opposite poles. I'm in the middle. I'm right here in the middle. I say, Hey bro, I'm rocking with your DM, but y'all need to work on this, that, and the third. I done lit up some of his offensive linemen on the show. So I mean, it ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's about, Hey bro, this offensive line, I done broke down two, three, four, five games of Colorado last year of just the protection the defensive line alone. Uh, just lighten them up. Like, hey, man, y'all could be better here, here, here. You messed up here, here, here. You know, Shadur, you missed this read. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, it ain't about just like, oh, Dion can't do no wrong. It's about like, hey, man, Tay having an honest, fair conversation about what's going on in Colorado. Where are we at right now? And I can honestly say, most mainstream media can't do it. Whether you love Dion or you hate him, you can't you can't really see the other side's perspective.